Hello and welcome dear students. Today we are going to discuss about the topic karyotypes and identification of chromosome variation. The main objectives of today's lecture are to know about the basic concept of chromosomes, to understand the concept of karyotypes, to understand the process of karyotyping, to learn the concept of karyograms and their role in detection of chromosomal abnormalities and finally we will discuss clinical significance of karyotyping. Dear students, let's start with the introduction first. As we know that chromosomes are the structures that hold our genes. A gene in turn is a segment of DNA that is deoxyribonucleic acid and contains the code for a specific protein that functions in one or more types of cells in the body. Genetic disorders occur when a mutation affects your genes. Carrying the mutation doesn't always mean you will end up with a disease or genetic disorder. There are many types of genetic disorders which include single gene disorder, multifactorial genetic disorder and chromosomal disorder or chromosomal abnormalities. Chromosomal disorders where chromosomes or part of chromosomes are missing or changed whereas on the other hand single gene disorders are those where a mutation affects only one gene. Sickle cell anemia is an example of single gene disorder. Changes in one or more base pairs of the DNA in a gene creates a variant of that gene that may affect how the genes work. These changes do not affect the structure of the chromosome and thus cannot be seen on karyotype analysis or other chromosomal tests. At present with our understanding of chromosomes, we can better understand genetic diseases. Over the last several years, the study of chromosomes has proven to be the most fruitful in understanding genetic diseases. Chromosome analysis, evaluating the number and structure of a person's chromosomes can help to detect abnormalities. Chromosomes, the thread-like structures within each cell nucleus contain the body's genetic blueprint and possess thousands of genes in specific locations. These genes are responsible for a person's inherited physical characteristics and they have a profound impact on growth, development and function. The isolation and microscopic observation of chromosomes forms the basis of cytogenetics. So dear students, let's learn more about the process of chromosome identification. Let's first understand the chromosomes in humans. Humans have 46 chromosomes present in 23 pairs. 22 pairs are found in both sexes that is autosomes and one pair that is the sex chromosome is present as either XY in males or XX in females. Normally all cells in the body that have a nucleus contain a complete set of same that is 46 chromosomes except for the reproductive cells that is eggs and sperms which contain a half set of 23. This half set is the genetic contribution that will be passed on to a child. At conception, half sets from each parent combine to form a new set of 46 chromosomes in the developing fetus. Chromosomal abnormalities include both numerical, that means the change in the number of chromosomes and structural change. For numerical change, anything other than a complete set of 46 chromosomes represents a change in the amount of genetic material present and can cause health and developmental problems. For a structural change, the significance of the problems and their severity depends upon the chromosome that is altered or changed. 
The type and degree of the problem may vary from person to person even when the same chromosome abnormality is present. A chromosomal karyotyping examines a person's chromosomes to determine if the right number is present and to determine if each chromosome appears normal. It requires experience and expertise to perform properly and interpret the results properly. While theoretically almost any cells could be used to perform testing, in practice it is usually performed on amniotic fluid to evaluate a fetus and on lymphocytes, that is a white blood cell from a blood sample to test all other ages. Alternatively, white blood cells may be obtained from bone marrow aspirations to look for change in individuals suspected of having hematological or lymphoid diseases like leukemia, lymphoma, myeloma or refractory anemia. Dear students, let's now talk about what a karyotype is. The term karyotype refers to the chromosomal pattern inside the nucleus of an animal cell that is an eukaryotic cell as well as to describe the set of chromosomes in a species or in an individual organism. The study of karyotype in eukaryotic cells is a branch of science termed cytogenetics from cyto meaning cell and genetics meaning the cell's chromosomal makeup. The human karyotype and number of chromosomes was first discovered early in the 20th century. By the mid-1950s, the human karyotype composed of its 46 chromosomes was finalized. Chimpanzees are the closest relatives to humans with a karyotype comprising of 48 chromosomes. Karyotype will be shared by organism from the same species but the following intraspecies variations are seen. Number one, that is the karyotype of males and females may differ. For example, in humans, the male karyotype contains an X and a Y chromosome, while in human females, there are two X chromosomes. There are karyotype differences between body, that is the somatic cells, and egg and sperm cells, that is the gametes. The sperm and egg cells each contain half of the number of chromosomes a somatic cell contains and only make a complete cell with the full number of 46 chromosomes when they combine during fertilization to form a zygote. Karyotypes may also differ with a population due to genetic polymorphism. The karyotype of a species may vary by geographical location and racial differences are also seen. Genetic abnormalities may also give rise to abnormal and different karyotypes. Dear students, now we will have a look upon the process of karyotyping. Karyotyping is actually the process of pairing and ordering all the chromosomes of an organism, thus providing a genome-wide snapshot of an individual's chromosomes. Karyotypes are prepared using sternized staining procedures that reveal characteristic structural features for each chromosome. Clinical cytogeneticists analyze human karyotypes to detect gross genetic change or anomalies involving several megabases or more of DNA. Karyotypes can reveal change in chromosome number associated with aneuploid conditions, such as trisomy of 21st chromosome which leads to Down syndrome. Careful analysis of karyotypes can also reveal more subtle structural changes such as chromosomal deletions, duplications, translocations or inversions. In fact, as medical genetics becomes increasingly integrated with clinical medicine, Karyotypes are becoming a source of diagnostic information for specific birth defects, genetic disorders, and even cancers. The study of karyotypes is made possible by staining. Usually, a civetable dye such as gymsa stain is applied after cells have been arrested during cell division by a solution of colchicine, usually in metaphase or prometaphase, when most 
condensed chromosomes are there at the equator. In order for the GIMSA stain to adhere correctly, all chromosomal proteins must be digested and removed. For humans, white blood cells are most frequently used because they are easily induced to divide and grow in tissue cultures. Sometimes observation may be made on non-dividing interface cells. The sex of an unborn fetus can be predicted by observation of interface cells. An experienced genetist can identify each chromosome based on its characteristic bending pattern. In addition to the bending patterns, chromosomes are further identified on the basis of the size and centromere location. To obtain the classic depiction of the karyotype in which homologous pairs of chromosomes are aligned in numerical order from longest to shortest, the genetist obtains a digital image which identifies each chromosome and manually arranges the chromosomes into this pattern. Six different characteristics of karyotypes are usually observed and compared. For example, difference in absolute size of chromosome. Chromosomes can vary in absolute size by as much as 20 fold between genera of the same family. Second is the differences in the position of the centromere. These differences probably came about through translocations. Differences in relative size of chromosomes. These differences probably arose from segmental interchange of unequal lengths. Differences in basic number of chromosomes. These differences could have resulted from successive unequal translocations which removed all the essential genetic material from a chromosome, permitting its loss without penalty to the organism. That is the dislocation hypothesis or through fusion. Humans have one pair fewer chromosomes than the great apes which have 48 chromosomes. So human chromosome 2 appears to have resulted from the fusion of the two ancestral chromosomes and many of the genes of those two original chromosomes have been translocated to other chromosomes. Differences in number and position of satellites. Differences in degree and distribution of heterochromatic regions. Dear students, arranging the chromosomes into a karyogram can simplify the identification of any abnormalities or change within the feeds. Note that the bending patterns between the two chromosome copies or homologs of any autosome are nearly identical. Some subtle differences between the homologs of a given chromosome can be attributed to natural structural variability among individuals. Occasionally, technical artifacts associated with the processing of chromosomes will also generate apparent differences between the two homologs. But these artifacts can be identified by analyzing metaphase spreads from one individual. It is highly unlikely that the same technical artifact would occur repeatedly in a given specimen. Dear students, advances in molecular genetics using either fluorescence in situ hybridization or FISH or quantitative fluorescence polymerase chain reaction that is QFPCR can be applied to give karyotype results within one or two days. Fluorescence in situ hybridization on uncultured amniotic fluid cells using chromosome specific DNA probes offers the opportunity for rapid screening of aneuploidies and has become an integral part of the current practice in many clinical cytogenetic laboratories. Aneuploidies involving chromosomes like 13, which causes Patau syndrome. 18 trisomy which causes Edward syndrome and 21st trisomy which causes Down syndrome and X and Y account for the majority of all chromosomal abnormalities in live born infants. Rapid diagnosis of fetal chromosome 
anomalies may facilitate clinical decision making especially when a fetal abnormality is detected late in pregnancy. Dear students, let's now discuss using karyograms to detect chromosomal abnormalities. Presently, G-banded karyograms are routinely used to diagnose a wide range of chromosomal abnormalities in individuals. Although the resolution of chromosomal chains or abnormalities detectable by karyotyping is typically a few megabases, this can be sufficient to diagnose certain categories of abnormalities. For example, aneuploidy which is often caused by the absence or addition of a chromosome is simple to detect by karyotype analysis. Cytogenetists can also frequently detect much more subtle deletions or insertions as deviations from normal bending patterns. Likewise, translocations are often readily apparent on karyotypes. When regional changes in chromosomes are observed on karyotypes, researchers often are interested in identifying candidate genes within the critical interval whose misexpression may cause symptoms in patients. This search process has been greatly facilitated by the completion of the Human Genome Project which has correlated cytogenetic bands with DNA sequence information. Consequently, investigators are now able to apply a range of molecular cytogenetic techniques to achieve even higher resolution of genomic change. Fluorescence, in situ hybridization or fish and comparative genome hybridization that is CGH are examples to two approaches that can potentially identify abnormalities at the level of individual genes. Molecular cytogenetics is a dynamic discipline and new diagnostic methods continue to be developed. As these new technologies are implemented in the clinic, we can expect that cytogeneticists will be able to make the leap from karyotype to gene with increasing efficiency. Dear students, let's talk about the fluorescence in situ hybridization fish technique as one of the modern techniques of chromosome identification. This method uses fluorescent labeled DNA probes to assess the presence, location and copy number of the complementary DNA sequence of interest in an individual genome by hybridization. The probes must be labeled either directly or indirectly depending on the presence of fluorescent nucleotides or nucleotides that act as haptans for fluorescently labeled antibodies respectively. First the sample is cultured for arrest in the metaphase stage. Following incubation, hybridization and wash out to remove unbound probes, the sample is viewed under a fluorescent microscope. This technique is particularly advantageous as a relatively rapid diagnostic tool for structural chromosomal abnormalities involving small segment of DNA that is microdeletions, translocations, etc. and for detecting trisomies due to a more distinct fluorescent reading. Ultimately, FISH led to a diverse group of more powerful techniques such as spectral karyotyping that is sky, multicolor FISH that is MFISH and comparative genomic hybridization that is CGH which overcomes some initial limitations that is single probe color and region of analysis. Dear students, let's now discuss the comparative genomic hybridization. Comparative genomic hybridization or CGH is a technique that permits the detection of chromosomal copy number change without the need for cell culturing. It provides a global overview of chromosomal gains and losses throughout the whole genome of a tumor. Tumor DNA is labeled with a green fluorochrome which is subsequently mixed with red labeled normal DNA and hybridized to normal human metaphase preparations. The green and red labeled DNA fragments compete for hybridization to their locus of origin on the chromosome. The green to red fluorescence ratio measured along the chromosomal axis represents loss or gain of genetic material in the tumor at that specific locus. Dear students, let's now talk about 
detecting genetic abnormalities like through invasive technologies or non-invasive technologies. Let's first discuss the invasive technologies. Amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling CVS are the two invasive strategies or techniques. Invasive testing is advised for pregnancies that bear a high risk of being affected by a chromosomal abbreviation or abnormality from family and individual history. Prenatal diagnosis of chromosomal abnormalities is currently accomplished by invasive techniques such as amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling that is CVS. CVS is performed in the first trimester from 10 through 13 weeks gestation where amniocentesis can be performed starting at 15 weeks gestation. Fetal chromosome analysis has been traditionally performed using GIMSA banding, that is G banding of cultured cells in metaphase and is considered the gold standard detection method. This technique is accurate and reliable allowing detection of a variety of numerical and structural chromosomal abbreviations. The diagnostic accuracy of karyotyping with amniocentesis is slightly higher than that of chorionic villus sampling. The primary disadvantage of the conventional cytogenetics is that the prenatal tissues must be cultured for several days prior to analysis. It takes 10 days to obtain results and has a culture failure rate of about 1%. Diagnosis of chromosomal abnormalities in fetus is one of the most important challenges in modern prenatology. The most common chromosomal abnormalities in newborns are trisomies of 21st that is the Down syndrome, that of 18 that is the Edwards syndrome and 13 that is the Patau syndrome and monosomy of X that is the Turner syndrome and other sex chromosome aneuploidies like Klinefelter syndrome where the 47 chromosomes are present. These aneuploidies can account for up to 95% of live-born chromosomal abnormalities. Prenatal diagnosis employs a variety of techniques to determine the health and condition of an unborn fetus. Some tests can detect genetic abnormalities before birth. By learning about these problems before birth, you can help plan your child's health care in advance and in some cases even treat the disorder while the baby is still in the womb of the mother. Dear students, let's discuss the first invasive technique that is amniocentesis. With amniocentesis, the doctor inserts a thin needle through the pregnant woman's abdominal wall into the uterus. A small sample of amniotic fluid is taken from the sac surrounding the fetus. When the fluid is analyzed in the laboratory, it can check for serious genetic and chromosomal disorders such as Down syndrome. Results of most amniocentesis testes are available within about two weeks. Dear students, let's discuss the second invasive technique that is chorionic villus sampling or CVS. With chorionic villus sampling CVS, a long slender needle is inserted through the abdomen to remove a small sample of cells called chorionic villi from the placenta or a catheter, a thin plastic tube is placed into the vagina and then inserted through the cervix to take cells from the placenta. This sample is then analyzed in the laboratory. CVS is usually performed earlier during the pregnancy than amniocentesis and most often between the 10th and 12th week of pregnancy. The test results are available within one to two weeks. Both amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling are considered accurate and safe procedures for prenatal diagnosis, although they pose a small risk of miscarriage and other complications. Dear students, let's now talk about some non-invasive prenatal testings, that is NIPT. During pregnancy, some of the baby's genetic information crosses into the mother's bloodstream. Non-invasive prenatal testing analyzes this DNA to check if the baby has a higher chance of having certain chromosomal disorders. A blood sample is taken from the mother, not from the baby usually after the 10th week of pregnancy because NIPT only involves a blood 
drawn from the mother, the pregnancy is not at risk for miscarriage or other complication. The test results are available within one to two weeks as well. NIPT is a screening test which means that an amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling may be offered to confirm the results. The other non-invasive techniques are ultrasound and biochemical screening from maternal blood. Maternal serum screening in the second trimester has now been available for over two decades. More recently, first trimester screening tests offer women the opportunity of early screening for fatal aneuploidy and the options of earlier diagnosis. In the first trimester of pregnancy, screening by a combination of ultrasound markers, that is the neutral translucency, anti and maternal serum that is beta, HCG or human chorionic gonadotropin and PAPPA that is pregnancy associated plasma protein A can identify up to 97% of fetuses with trisomy 21st that is Down syndrome and other major chromosomal abnormalities. In trisomy 21 during the first trimester of pregnancy the maternal serum concentration of free beta human chorionic gonadotropin is increased and PAPPA protein is decreased. In trisomy of 18 that is Edward syndrome and 13th that is Petau syndrome, maternal serum free beta human chorionic gonadotropin and PAPPA protein are decreased. Ultrasonography may also be used for screening in the second trimester either alone or as an adjunct to maternal serum testing. The use of ultrasound for prenatal diagnosis is appealing for many reasons. Its safety and non-invasive characteristics are certainly two of its most desirable traits. Second trimester ultrasonography may identify fetal anatomic defects such as congenital heart defect or markers suggestive of fetal aneuploidy like a thickened neutral fold absent nasal bone, renal pilactasis, or ecogenic bowel. The advantages of this non-invasive method are to reduce the number of women undergoing invasive prenatal diagnosis as well as increase the proportion of Down syndrome detections. Dear students, let's now discuss the clinical significance of karyotyping. Approximately 0.4 to 0.9 percent of newborns have chromosomal abnormalities and about half of them have an abnormal phenotype. The following abrasions correlate the most clinically relevant aneuploidies and are autosomal trisomies like trisomy of 13th chromosome that is Petau syndrome, trisomy of 18th chromosome that is Edward syndrome, trisomy of 21st chromosome that is Down syndrome and the sex chromosomes, aneuploidies like clinifilter syndrome with extra X chromosome that is 47 chromosomes, XXY and occurs in males and triple X syndrome which occurs in females where karyotype is 47 that is triple X and XXY syndrome which occurs in males where the karyotype is 47XYY. Turner syndrome on the other hand which occurs in females where the karyotype is 45 plus X0 where one X chromosome is missing. Dear students, let's now conclude the lecture. This module has provided a much more detailed understanding of the process of karyotyping Karyotyping is the process of peering and ordering all the chromosomes of an organism thus providing a genome-wide snapshot of an individual's chromosomes. Karyotypes are prepared using sternizer staining procedures that reveal characteristic structural features for each chromosome. Clinical cytogeneticists analyze human karyotypes to detect gross genetic changes, anomalies involving several megabases or more of DNA. Karyotypes can also reveal more subtle structural changes, such as chromosomal deletions, duplications, translocations, or inversions. In fact, as medical genetics becomes increasingly integrated with clinical medicine, karyotypes are becoming a source of diagnostic information for specific birth defects, genetic disorders, and even cancers. 
dear students it was all about today's lecture on karyotyping hope you have understood it well see you next time with a new topic till then take care bye bye good luck